During their conversation with Russian soldiers, residents of Sudza district in Russia's Kursk region have said that they were actually Ukrainians. Speaking to the military in Ukrainian, the residents said that the majority of Ukrainian-speaking residents of Kursk region are originally from Ukraine and expressed their dissatisfaction with the Russian authorities. Residents said that Ukraine has the right to choose the European path, and Russia has no right to interfere in this choice. Residents, most of whom are elderly, stressed that Putin's government had left the people of Kursk without any help. Russia's war against Ukraine has now lasted more than two and a half years, fueling international calls for a political settlement. But the peace terms remain unacceptable to Kiev and Moscow. Putin and Zelensky have publicly said they are open to talks, but neither has given up on their long-standing goals or on winning, says Rajan Menon, a political analyst at The Guardian who has visited Ukraine four times during the war. Could a combination of war, weariness and fear of escalation pave the way for negotiations that will end the war? I am skeptical, the author writes. Menon notes that morale among Ukrainians, either at the front or in the rear, has not dropped to a level that leaves Zelensky no choice but to end the fighting and seek peace on Russia's terms. Nevertheless, the Kursk operation is further evidence that Kyiv remains determined to continue the fight. Indeed, Zelensky and his commanders believe that these gains can be consolidated if Britain and the United States allow Ukraine to use their long-range missiles to strike Russian airfields, the political scientist adds. Earlier, Ukraine's ambassador to India, Alexander Polistruk, said that Kiev wants New Delhi to moderate the talks and use its ties with Russia to bring Moscow to the negotiating table. Polistruk added that Ukraine has offered India to hold a second peace summit by November 2024 to end the war. However, it is unclear whether New Delhi will agree to this. According to Bloomberg, some of Ukraine's allies are starting to talk about how the fight against Russia's invasion might end, raising concerns in several other Western capitals that these efforts could lead to Kiev being forced into a premature ceasefire. As part of their discussions of strategy for the next year, officials are more seriously gaming out how a negotiated end to the conflict and an off-ramp could take shape, according to people familiar with the matter who asked for anonymity to discuss private deliberations. Negotiations to end the fighting will have to resolve a key issue, how to ensure that Ukraine does not become vulnerable to future Russian attack while reassuring its allies that they will not be drawn into a direct conflict with the Kremlin. Any talks will also have to overcome the bitter legacy of the Minsk agreements, which were agreed upon after the seizure of Crimea in 2014. The article says, one European defense official also said European governments shared concerns that Putin would exploit Western uncertainty after the deal was struck. Some allies believe the time between the U.S. election in November and the presidential inauguration next January could provide a window of opportunity, with the ongoing Biden administration having more political leeway to strike a deal. The trajectory of the military conflict in the next two months will be quite steep. In the basic scenario, military actions will continue after the inauguration. But the likelihood of alternative scenarios is also high, the Bloomberg source added. Russian President Vladimir Putin has once again invoked red lines, 
warning Western leaders that any decision to allow Ukraine to fire long-range missiles at Russian territory would mean NATO is at war with Russia, says Peter Dickinson, editor of a column for the Atlantic Council. He noted that these words contain the obvious problem of the Russian dictator's threats. Ukraine is already using the aforementioned weapons to strike at occupied regions that Putin considers Russian, and this has not provoked any escalation, let alone a war between Russia and NATO, the expert noted. According to him, there are already signs that Western leaders are ready to reconsider their position and give Ukraine the green light, despite Putin's threats. The analyst believes that Putin hopes to intimidate NATO leaders while he himself has not yet adapted to the new territorial realities promoted by his own rhetoric. The head of the Kremlin, as Dickinson recalls, said that the temporarily occupied territories of Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia regions will forever remain with Russia, but the strikes of the Ukrainian armed forces with Western missiles on the occupiers in these regions, as well as on Crimea, did not violate the red lines. In August 2024, as the article states, the Ukrainian army crossed the reddest of all lines when it entered the territory of the Kursk region. It is now clear that Putin's red lines are a bluff designed to scare the West and isolate Ukraine. Over the past two and a half years, his attempts to impose restrictions on international adversaries have been repeatedly exposed and have become increasingly disconnected from the reality of the war. We have reached the point where Putin's latest red lines directly contradict his own propaganda, Dickinson said. Let us recall that it is previously reported on strikes deep into Russia with Western weapons and what the NATO Secretary General thinks about this. According to him, Ukraine needs to be given this permission so that it has the opportunity to defend itself to strike airfields, artillery and other military facilities. Russia could also conduct nuclear tests to intimidate the West. Experts have outlined several steps Putin could take to remind everyone of his red lines.